We are continuing the conversation about staying safe in the water. Flesh-eating bacteria has infected 11 people here in Florida this summer. Four have died, including a person in St. Johns County. There were also deaths in Hillsborough, Bay, and Broward counties, along with infections here in Duval, Escambia, Lee, Manatee, Santa Rosa, and Walton counties, according to data from the Florida Department of Health. And we have reported on infections in our area before. In 2013, a local fisherman was infected while crabbing in Yuli. He was in pain just hours later, and you can see the discoloration in his arm. Joining us this morning on the morning show is Dr. Silpa Amin. She is the medical chief of VR at HCA Florida Memorial Hospital. Good morning. Thanks Good for morning. being with us. Sure. I appreciate it. So how does this bacteria get into, into the body? So there's two ways. You can consume uh, raw seafood, such as oysters, mm -hmm. that are contaminated with the bacteria, and then you ingest it. Or if you have an open wound, the bacteria will actually seed into the wound. I, I want to talk just very briefly about that first. Um, it, it, what are the warning signs if you have somehow gotten a bad oyster, for example, and may have this? Sure. So you'll feel like you have a really bad GI bug, abdominal bloating, cramping, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. You'll feel really ill within hours. And and, and is that, can, can it be deadly like we see with the skin condition? I mean, do people need to get make sure that they don't delay and really seek medical attention right away? 100%. If you think that you're infected with this illness, come to the emergency room right away. We can treat you with antibiotics. Yeah, I can see how people might just pass this off as food poisoning and might just try to just, you know, tough it out a little bit. You're suggesting that's what something that should not be done. Definitely. Particularly if you know you've eaten raw oysters as an example. Definitely. And especially if you're immunocompromised, have some liver disease, you need to come to the emergency room immediately. All right. Very, very important point. Um, what kind of water does this live in? Now, let's pivot to if it, it comes in through a cut in the skin. So Vibrio lives in brackish water and warm salt water. So think bays, warm coastal, gulf water, it lives in there. And how does it then get in to the body? So it will actually seed into a deep wound. It will go into the wound and stay there. Well, so it's not that it's you drank some of the water or you some of the water got in your nose like we see, have heard sometimes with a brain-eating amoeba. This right. is totally different. It's through a cut in the skin? It's through a deep cut in the skin, yes. All right, so you say bay. We don't have really many of those, but I know the St. John's River is brackish water. And then we also, do we have to worry about people? I mean, there's so many people who are flocking to our coast to, you know, to swim in the ocean to try to stay cool. Could this be an issue for the, anybody who's swimming just off the coast in the ocean? Definitely. It thrives in water warm water. So anybody that's in the water, you have to be aware. So if you do have a wound on your body and you decide to go swimming, just cover the wound with a waterproof bandage. And then once you get out of the water, just rinse it out with some clean water. Yeah, so it's so interesting. I mean, I remember my grandmother and even my mother telling me, you know, if you've got a cut, go in the water. It helps the salt water helps heal it faster. I mean, that is totally counterintuitive to when it comes to flesh eating bacteria. Sure. So, I mean, there is some truth to clean, sterile saline water, which we use in the hospital, but salt water is not sterile. It has bacteria, parasites. You don't want that getting into your wound. Oh, for sure. So, what are the warning signs? And we saw the picture from the Nassau County man. I remember uh, covering that, and it's just, it is unbelievable how quickly the, the, this bacteria begins to literally eat away at your skin. So what are the warning signs? So initially it'll just look like a normal skin infection. It'll be red, there'll be some blisters, but it will spread very rapidly. There'll be a lot of discoloration like we saw in that gentleman. There'll be fevers, chills, and you want to get to the emergency room right away. You do not want to delay care in this situation. I, I, I mean, this can lead to death very quickly if not caught early. Definitely. So you want to go early because the earlier you go, the more tissue you can save. This can be fixed by surgical debridement. In very you know, terrible cases, you'll need to get an amputation mm -hmm. to stop the spread of this disease. And that is how quickly it can spread. I, I remember even many years ago, my father grew up in Mandarin, right? And he tells me all these stories about swimming the St. John's River. He always wants to go back and swim in the St. John's River, and now we live at the beach. I'm like, no, Dad, you can't, because he always has cuts, you know, on his skin just because right. he's older and blood thinner and whatnot. But I remember a story about a jet skier who had cut herself in, in the St. John's River and caught it this way. Right. I, I just think it's so important that people understand that if they get a cut, for example, in the water. I mean, what do you need to do to clean that just in case to prevent something like this? So if you get a cut in the water, that's a lot of what we see in the emergency room. Come to the ER, let us know that you were swimming in brackish water, in the river, in the ocean, and we will give you specific antibiotics to stop the spread of the disease. And, and that'll work? Oh, yes. Um, any other kind of treatment for the bacteria other than antibiotic? 
antibiotics, and just really, really early detection. I cannot stress that enough. If we catch this quickly, we can save tissue, we can prevent uh, amputations. Yeah, it's interesting too. People hear bacteria. Any reason this would be contagious? No, 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 no. So it's not that kind of bacteria. It's not that kind of bacteria. Doctor, thank you for your, uh, we appreciate being um, here. And a reminder, you know, it's worst case scenario. It is very rare, but the reality is, is we don't want it to happen to anyone. And when I saw that someone in St. John's County had died, it immediately said, you know, we need to get you on and make sure that our viewers are aware. We appreciate definitely. you being here. Of course. Thank you.